Hi everyone and welcome to another Pat Problems video. My name is Helena and I'm the Access and Outreach Manager for the Department of Materials at the University of Oxford and today we're going to be taking a look at question number 10 from the 2013 Pat paper. So let's have a look at what this question is asking. So in this question we have a shape here in this figure and we're being asked to find the shaded area as shown in the diagram in terms of this radius of this small inner circle r. Okay so we are told that all of the triangles are equilateral so this smaller inner triangle and the bigger outer triangle are both equilateral. So what does that mean? That means that all three sides are the same length and that means that all of these angles, the bigger and the smaller triangle, are all equal and they're all 60 degrees. Okay, so what are we going to need to do in order to find this shaded area? Well, we're going to want to first of all break it down into the smaller inner circle and triangle shape and the larger outer shapes. And we're going to want to find the area of the triangle and take away from that the area of the circles. So in order to do that, we need to calculate a few lengths. Okay, so first of all, I'm just going to draw this inner triangle circle combination here. Just quickly sketch that out, not very accurate, but good enough. And I'm going to label on this inner radius here and remind myself that these outer areas here are what we're being asked to find. OK, so in order to calculate the area of a triangle, we need to know the length of one of the sides. And we also need to know this height measurement here, because the area of a triangle is half the base times the height. All right. So in order to get these lengths, I'm going to split this into smaller right angled triangles. So we have six smaller right angled triangles here, and I'm just going to draw one a little bit bigger out at the side here. So there's the right angle there, and there's the radius here. And I'm going to label this length here x and this length y. So on this diagram, that's this length here is y, and this length here is x. And we can see that this value of x is half of the full length of the side. So the length of the side is 2x. And we can also see that this height here is this length y plus the radius of the smaller circle there. So if we can find x and y, we can find our base and our height measurements. So let's have a think about some of the angles here. So because these are equilateral triangles, we know that this angle here is 60 degrees. So this angle at the top here must be half of that, which is 30 degrees. And then because they have to sum to 180, we know that this one here is 60 degrees. So now we can find our x and y using a little bit of trigonometry. So there's a few ways that you could go about this. You could focus on the 30 degree angle or the 60 degree angle. I'm going to take a look at the 60 degree angle here. And from that, I can see that tan of 60 degrees is equal to x over r, the opposite over the adjacent side here. So if we rearrange that to find x is equal to r tan of 60 degrees, and you might remember what tan of 60 degrees is. If not, you can just pop it into your calculator and check, but that's actually root 3. So we have a value for x is equal to root 3 times r here, okay, which means that the full length of the side, so the length of the side, which is 2x, is 2 root 3 r. Okay. Now again, focusing on this angle, I can see that the cosine of the angle is equal to r over y. So if we rearrange that to find y is equal to r over cos of 60 degrees. And again, you might remember that that is a half. So y equals 2 r. Okay. And if we put that into our formula for the height, that gives us that the height of the triangle is 2r plus r, which is 3r. OK, so if we want the area of the triangle, the smaller triangle, which is half its base times its height, which is a half times this 2 root 3r here, times the height, which is 3r. OK, so if we just tidy that up, we find that the area of the small triangle is 3 root 3 r squared. And then the area of the circle, which is just a circle of radius r, 
is pi r squared. So in the shaded area here, the smaller shaded area, is the area of the triangle minus the area of the circle, if we look back at the picture, which is 3 root 3 r squared minus pi r squared, which if we tidy that away into some brackets, it's just 3 root 3 minus pi all multiplied by r squared. Okay, so that's our smaller shaded area. So now let's have a look at the larger shaded area here. So for this, we're going to need to know the radius of the larger circle, which actually we've already found out, because if you look on the diagram here, this is equivalent to the radius of the larger circle. And this was our, our y here. So now we have a circle with radius of, where are we, 2r here. So essentially, our bigger circle is two times the radius of the small circle. And we'd want to do exactly the same calculation. But instead of going through all of it again, to save us some time, we can simply replace r in this here with 2r, remembering to square it all, to give us the larger shaded area of this bracket, 3 root 3 minus pi, multiplied by 2r all squared, which is equal to 4. 3 root 3 minus pi r squared. Okay, so that's the larger triangle shaded area. So that's these three bits here. So to find the full shaded area, we want to add them together. So the total shaded area is equal to four lots of this plus one lot of this, which is five, three root three minus pi r squared. And that is the area that we've been asked to find. So I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching and join us again next week for another Pat Problems video.